All right, so the target of this lesson is to draw graphs and then to find values, domain, and range for piecewise functions and also to transform absolute value functions into piecewise functions. And we're going to start with a classic piecewise function example. It is uh, the Postal Service and the way that they charge you to mail a letter. So at one ounce, anything up to one ounce and including one ounce because it says weight not over, they are going to charge you 42 cents. So what that means is if I draw a graph, down here is my weight in ounces. That's my independent variable or my input. And out comes my cost, which is my dependent variable. It cost me 42 cents, so I'm just going to be sort of inaccurate and say right there is 42 cents. Anything from 0 to 1 ounce is going to cost 42 cents. But really, if it's 0, is it going to cost any money? No, I wouldn't pay money to mail nothing. So I'm going to open circle that. And at 1, since it's not over, that means 1 ounce will be 42 cents. Now what happens is, as soon as you go the tiniest little bit over an ounce, 1.0001 ounces, you jump up to 59 cents. So I'm going to do a very bad scale here. But this is just a graph. I want to get the idea. 59 cents, I'm going to be is going to happen at a little bit more than one. So that's going to give me an open circle here. But anything up to two ounces is going to be that 59 cents. Two ounces is going to cost 59 cents. Uh, I can continue in this manner. Three ounces, a little bit. So anything that's a little bit over two all the way to three is going to cost the next price, which is 76 cents. So I have an open circle and ending with the closed, and then up to 3.5 ounces. Um, so we're going to have 3.5. So at 3, we're going to jump to the next price, which is 93 cents, ending 3.5. So anything in that interval, anything between 3 and 3.5 ounces will cost uh, 93 cents. I can um, write an equation to model this. So when we do a piecewise equation, we're going to call it f of x. And we're going to do this big bracket. So f of x is represented by different parts. And you have to, so the first part you're going to have is your bracket. And then I say, what's my y value? Well, the first y value I hit is 42 cents. And that happens when 0 is less than my input is less than or equal to 1 ounce. Okay, so right here is the function. And right here is the for what inputs. Okay. Uh, my next piece is 59 cents. So it's a second piece of this graph. And that happens from 1, not including 1, all the way up to 2. Uh, and similarly, we can do 76 cents all the way from 2, not including 2, up until 3. And our final piece is uh, 93 cents from 3, not including 3, to 3.5. So if it's 3 ounces, I'm going to use this. Um, I'm not going to use this part. 3 ounces is going to be this y value, not that one. But anything in between 3 and 3.5 will give me 0.93. So let's look at this function. Here is, I'm giving you the piecewise function. So what this says is that g of x is 4 for any x in between or below, below 1. And I'm going to use 2x to get my output for any x that's greater than or equal to 1. So if we want to evaluate some things, I want to do g of negative 2. So right here, g of negative 2. I want negative 2 to be my input. So my, my idea is I think about which piece of the function, which equation do I use, equation or value do I use when x or negative 2 is my input. So here's my input. I have to look and say, and this right here is where the inputs are. So which piece does g of negative 2 go with? Well, negative 2 is below 1. So I'm going to get for my output whatever this tells me, and that tells me that g of negative 2 is going to be 4. So now when I go 
to 1, g of 1, which piece, do I use the top piece or the bottom piece? Well, when x is 1, I use this piece. And it says to take 2 times my x-coordinate. And if my x-coordinate is 1, I'm going to get 2 times 1, and I get 2. And then our last example is um, g of 3. So in this case, I use the same piece that I just used. Um, 3 is in this part. 3 is bigger than 1, so I'm going to use 2 times 3, 2x, 2 times my input of 3, and I would get 6. So I can sketch a graph for this. So before 1, so this part right here, this is splitting my graph into two halves, and it comes at 1, so really it's kind of like I've split my graph into two halves. Now this is not an asymptote. I am not drawing that to be an asymptote. I'm just saying that in this part right here, I'm going to use y equals 4 all the way up to there. And in this part right here, I am going to use y equals 2x. Okay, so let's get rid of this so we're not confused that that's an asymptote. That's not what's happening. Um, how can I graph this? Well, one way is just to pick some points. Like we said, when in our example, when x is negative 2, I use the top function, and I get 4. Similarly, when x is negative 3, I get 4. I get 4 as my y value, or my output, for any x up to 1, but not including 1. So I do a little open circle at 1. And now I think about the other half. I probably should have done that in green. Um, I can draw right over it, because that matches what I did down here. Now, after that, for any x bigger than 1 or equal to 1, I'm going to use the 2x. So let's think about what happens at that boundary. When x is 1, I get 2 out. So that point is on the graph. And then I am, I'm trying to graph basically the equation y equals 2x. So when x is 1, I get 2. When x is 2, I'm going to get 2 times 2, or 4. When x is 3, I'm going to get 6. And you can see I'm following this up to over 1, up to over 1. And I continue in that direction. I should actually also put a little thing over here. So there's my graph. Now, I want to know domain and range. If I think about domain, and we've talked about this in class, you could do a domain of negative infinity to 1, and then 1 to infinity, because I'm just talking about x. However, in, in the 1 here would be included. But you can actually write negative infinity to infinity, and that's going to be my preferred domain. The first thing is correct, but it overlaps. I can hit every number in between negative 1, or negative infinity and infinity. Every x has a y value. So my domain is negative infinity to infinity. Now I can think about my range. Again, you could split it into two parts. One part for this and one part for that. Or we can look at the entire graph and say, what numbers can I put in for y? Like, what's the lowest number for y? And that is right here at 2. From there, if I walk along this graph, I can hit every number up to infinity. So my range is going to be negative 2 to infinity. All right. Another classic example of, uh, of a piecewise function that maybe you wouldn't think of is absolute value. Absolute value can be thought of as a piecewise function, and, and it works like this. The easy way to start off is when x is positive. So if I take, for example, the absolute value of 3, I get 3. If I take the absolute value of 7, I get 7 and so on. If x is positive, the absolute value of x is just x. The tricky part comes when x is negative. Okay? Or actually, that's this part right here. When x is less than 0. So if I take the absolute value of negative 3, I get 3. If I take the absolute value of negative 9, or negative 7, I get 7. If I take the absolute value of a negative number, right, I get the opposite. Right? If this is, if negative 7 is x, 
then that right there is the opposite of x. And so that's our piecewise function. Okay. So let's try this. So I, now I have two separate pieces. And if I put them together, when x is greater than or equal to 0, I have the line y equals x. Well, y equals x starts right here, and it goes up with a slope of 1. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Boom, right there. And when x is less than 0, and that's including 0. So when x is less than 0, I would put a little open bracket, but it's the, y, the line y equals negative x. So y equals negative x also goes through 0, 0, and it goes up 1, back 1, up 1, back 1. And that is indeed our absolute value graph, as we learned in our parent functions. And that's a piecewise function. So it's x when x is greater than or equal to 0, or the opposite of x when x is less than or equal to 0. OK. Now I'm going to write the following as a piecewise function. So I have absolute value of x minus 4. So I have to split this up, and I have to be a little tricky when I think about this. What's going to happen is when x minus 4 is greater than 0, the absolute value of x minus 4 is going to be the same as x minus 4. If I get a positive number out, I'm going to just keep that example. Uh, if we think about it with a number, let's say I put in 7. 7 minus 4 is greater than 0. Or actually, let's, let's try and solve this right here. x minus 4 is greater than 0 means that x is greater than 4, if you add 4 to both sides. So anytime x is greater than 4, the absolute value should be the thing I put in. If we test that, if I put in 5, absolute value of 5 minus 4 is the same as 5 minus 4. Absolute value of, say, 7 minus 4 is the same as 7 minus 4, because those are both 3. If I pick a number less than 4, or actually I think here we could say less than or equal to if we're going to be exact. If I pick a number that's less than 4, say 3, absolute value of 3 minus 4 is not the same as 3 minus 4. But what is it? 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Um, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So instead of 3 minus 4, I want this to be 4 minus 3. If we think back to where those numbers came from, 4 minus x. Or the opposite of x minus 4. Because if I distribute this negative, that becomes negative x, and that becomes a positive 4. So my first step is to set this, or make that inequality. What, when is that greater than 0? <clears throat> and that's going to give me the inputs for my first piece. And so when x, is, x minus 4 is greater than 0, that happens when x is greater than or equal to 4. And when that happens, I, when I have a positive answer in here, when it's positive, the absolute value is the same thing. Um, similarly, so then the rest of the graph comes from when x is less than 4. And what happens is we get the opposite of x minus 4. Or you could call that 4 minus x. And if we sketch this graph, let's take a look. If I sketch this graph, so my cutoff is at 4. That's my boundary. So I need to think about what happens when x is 4. In each part, I end up with 0. When I'm above 4, I get the line x minus 4, which has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of negative 4. But it's a slope of 1, so I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So that's this piece right there. My other piece is what's happening in this part of the graph right here. When x is less than 4, <clears throat> my line is 4 minus x. And now my slope is negative 1. So going forward, I would go, I would go over 1, down 1. But we're going backwards, So I want because I only care about what's happening this direction. So I'm going to go up 1, back 1, up 1, back one, up one, back one, up one, back one. And that's one, two, 
and there's my graph. And if you remember from your parent functions, absolute value of x minus 4 should be a shift right of 4 of our absolute value graph. And that is indeed what this picture shows. All right? Now you should be able to do your on your own problem.